Hey guys, Tyler here. The X-Men are one of the most well-known superhero teams in popular culture. First appearing in 1963's The X-Men No. 1 by Jack Kirby and Stan Lee, X-Men has become one of the most successful franchises in Marvel Comics history. They've been featured in numerous books, TV shows, films, video games, and more. But today, I want to talk about the science behind the X-Men's unique genetic heritage and biological transformations. Obviously, talking about each and every X-Men's specific power would take way too long for the runtime of this video, but instead, I'd like to examine the basis of the so-called X-Gene, and the claim that mutants are the next step in human evolution. Oh, and by the way, spoilers for most of the X-Men films. With that out of the way, let's get started. Generally speaking, mutants are born with superhuman abilities that start to manifest when they reach puberty. Several times throughout the franchise, we are reminded that mutation is a natural process, a fundamental part of evolution. The process of mutation, it's emphasized, is quite gradual, normally taking thousands and thousands of years. But in the X-Men universe, Every few hundred millennia, evolution seems to jump forward. What this means is that the X gene, which again can lie dormant in humans for generations on end, will occasionally manifest in certain individuals. These mutations are often triggered by periods of intense emotional stress, which various X-Men use to their advantage. Kind of like the Hulk. That's my secret, Cap. I'm always angry. One problem is that the very mechanics behind the X gene, how it's passed on from generation to generation, how exactly it enables people to have superpowers, that kind of thing, is barely touched on in the films and is quite inconsistent throughout the comics. By one character's reckoning, the X gene is carried by the male before being transmitted to their offspring. In Earth 616, which is the main Marvel continuity according to the comics, Hank McCoy, aka Beast, states that the X gene resides on the 23rd chromosome, i.e. the sex chromosome. You may remember from biology class that each of our cells has 46 chromosomes, 22 identical pairs of autosomes, or body chromosomes, and one pair of allosomes, or sex chromosomes. There's also copies of the mitochondrial genome, mitochondria being the powerhouse of the cell. But that's a story for another time. Each chromosome has hundreds, and in some cases, thousands of individual genes that determine hereditary information. They also contain millions of base pairs, the nitrogenous compounds that, when bonded together by hydrogen bonds, contribute to the double helix structure of DNA. The two sex chromosomes, the X and the Y chromosome, determine, naturally, the sex of an individual. Everyone gets one pair of chromosomes from their mother and the other pair from their father. People who were assigned female at birth almost always have two X chromosomes, again, one from their mother and one from their father, while people assigned male at birth almost always have an X and a Y chromosome. Various references in the comics state that the X gene is carried on the X chromosome. Sometimes it's inherited from a mutant's mother, such as with Wolverine's mother Elizabeth in at least one continuity, and at other times by their father, such as in the case of X-23, aka Lara, Wolverine's daughter. It is also stated on various occasions that if both parents are mutants, then the birth of a mutant child is almost guaranteed. Human attempts to understand genetics date back to, essentially, the beginning of our species. Even in prehistoric times, the observation that living things inherit traits was self-evident and used to improve crops and livestock through selective breeding a form of evolution called artificial selection. The modern science of genetics, of course, began with the work of Gregor Mendel in the 19th century. As you probably also learned in science class, 
Mendel studied the nature of inheritance in plants, and he was able to mathematically describe various inheritance patterns. Later scientists discovered chromosomes and realized that they are the vectors of hereditary information. And of course, Watson and Crick identified the double helix structure of DNA in 1953, based on x-ray work by Rosalind Franklin and Maurice Wilkins. But even before Mendel, a Hungarian noble named uh, I, I don't even know what to do with that, I'm sorry. Imre Festetics, whoa, first used the word genetics and described the basic principles of mutation. What even is mutation, though? Simply put, it's an alteration in the sequence of base pairs in the genome of an organism, virus, or really anything with DNA. The sequence of nitrogenous bases in a given DNA strand is translated by cell machinery, specifically ribosomes, into a sequence of amino acids which in turn make up proteins. These proteins go on to perform a vast array of functions, including catalyzing metabolic reactions, replicating DNA, providing structure to cells, and transporting both molecules and chemical and electrical signals throughout the body. DNA replication during cell division can lead to errors that form the basis of mutations. They can also be caused by damage inflicted to DNA by various types of radiation, such as UV radiation, or in the case of the Hulk, gamma rays. Even though in real life that would have just killed him. <laughs> While not all mutations produce detectable changes in an organism's observable characteristics or phenotype, perfection. They do play a part in both normal biological processes like evolution or the development of the immune system, as well as abnormal processes like cancer. You're goddamn right. Or they can just give you auburn hair. It's very groovy mutation. And indeed, activation of the X gene leads via the real processes of translation and transcription to the production of an exotic protein, which chemically signals other genes to mutate and cause superpowers. This brings us to how the X-Men fit in with the human project of taking control of one's genetic destiny. In the real mid-20th century, the newfound molecular understanding of inheritance led to an explosion of scientific research. Research by Tomoko Ota stressed the importance of natural selection and the environment on the rate at which mutation occurs, which is used in X-Men First Class to explain the apparent explosion of the mutant population as a result of the development and testing of nuclear weapons. Improvements in technology allowed us to sequence the human genome, a complete set of base pair sequences encoded as DNA in our chromosomes, by 2003 through the Real World Human Genome Project. This opened the door to a whole new world of possibilities in the realm of genetic engineering. In fact, as we learn in Logan, by 2004 in the X-Men universe, the scientific group Alkali Transigen began using genetically modified foods to suppress the X gene and prevent it from being passed on to future generations. This resulted in a rapid decline of the mutant population and a apparent lack of mutant births, or at least so we're led to believe initially. Watch the movie. Logan is really, really good. But suffice it to say, this use of, well, eugenics to control the mutant population is part and parcel with what humans have done in the past, and to some extent still do today. I mean, there's a reason that Magneto is a Holocaust survivor, and the X-Men were originally created as an allegory for the civil rights movement. Not only is there a loose scientific basis for the source of mutants' superpowers, but there's a stronger basis for their treatment as outcasts in parallel with discrimination in our society. As for the evolutionary angle, well, both the X-Men films and the Source comics have quite a bit to say on the matter. Now, obviously, the expression of genes that cause superpowers like telepathy and rapid healing and shape-shifting, among other things, and the rapid jump of such biological evolution every few hundred millennia is the science fiction part of the equation. But there's something to be said about the relationship between humans and mutants 
as separate species. In the comics, mutants are referred to as Homo superior, as opposed to the taxonomic classification for baseline humans, Homo sapiens. Much like how Homo sapiens drove Neanderthals to extinction, probably through a mix of conflict and interbreeding, as well as environmental factors, there's always the threat that Homo superior could do the same to us. As for the claim that mutants are the next step in human evolution, well, that phrasing in and of itself carries lots of implications that are scientifically dubious. What does next step even mean? We like to think of evolution as a linear process that includes links in a proverbial chain. We went from lower primates to some middle step to modern humans. But this isn't so. Evolution is complicated. It's more like a web of interconnected species, a tree of life with branches that sprout in different directions. Some branches lead to more branches, while others just stop. An example of the latter would be extinct species like Neanderthals, which didn't survive, while modern humans are on a branch that by definition has continued to this day. Homo superior would have branched off from us not because they're actually superior, even though in a lot of ways they kind of are, but really mainly because they're different. In real life, there's an ongoing debate in evolutionary biology as to whether or not Homo sapiens has stopped evolving, especially with our ability to cheat natural selection through various means, whether it's genetic engineering, climate control so we no longer have to regulate our body temperature, glasses to help people with visual impairments, or just the advent of modern medicine itself. In the future, it's possible that humanity will stratify into different species based on whatever environments we're living in, whether it's on Earth or hypothetical extraplanetary colony worlds. The next step in human evolution will be varied, and it will be whatever the environment dictates. If we lose traits that we now take for granted, well, that's natural selection too. There's nothing we can do about it. But if we happen to gain advantageous traits, well, that'll bring the science of the X-Men universe one small step closer to reality. That's why I think that the X-Men are intriguing. In addition to being a superhero romp with political intrigue to boot, X-Men stories are, in my opinion, some of the most human stories in Marvel Comics. Thank you all so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to leave a thumbs up down below and don't forget to share it. That stuff really helps me out. If you haven't subscribed yet, be sure to do that as well so you won't miss future uploads and click the bell icon to receive all notifications. If you want to support my work even further, becoming a patron or a member is a great way to do so. Links to those, as well as my social media and merch store, are in the description. That's all I have for this week. I'll see you next time. And don't forget... Mutants! I'm proud.